people like Coldplay and voted for the Nazis. You can't trust people, Jeremy. Yeah, we're doing Coldplay. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're of course doing something different. And um, we did Swans, we did Porcupine Tree, we did The Cure. And what is the most logical way to proceed? Coldplay, of course. Coldplay, and you may wonder why the fuck did I decide to go with Coldplay? Well, I kind of like some of their stuff, and um, I'm gonna talk about it as well. But uh, I know people hate tend to hate Coldplay, and uh, in some cases they tend to over hate Cold Coldplay without any specific reason. I get you know for you to hate the new stuff and uh, what they become, but. Uh, I don't think they're a bad band actually so they released like nine studio albums so far and I my peak I lost interest around Milo Zilotto I believe in 2011 when that where, when that album came out and I've been following them for a bit you know but I kind of lost hope uh, and I decided to you know what I'm gonna listen to all of the albums and see what is going on? My expectations were low um, for the new records after after Viva La Vida, and I was kind of right. So, without further ado, let's get this started. At number nine, and actually these last two albums can go, you know, I can swap them around. They're the same. I hate them, uh, and uh, I decided to go with A Head Full of Dreams from 2015. This album is like, what if we take everything that sucks on Milo Xyloto and make a full album of it? Well, we get this clusterfuck of a record. Oh my God, this was obnoxious for me to listen and to go from start to finish. I hate every song on it and even the songs that are kind of decent in a way that like Adventure of Lifetime could be maybe a good song but uh, with this kind of production and um, I don't know I, I hate it and that music video is oh, I want to throw up uh, there are some big choruses danceable pop tunes uh, that are really shallow and annoying most of the time uh, Songs like uh, Army of One make me puke. I mean, I, I don't want to waste my words talking about this record. I think it's pretty uh, mid, pretty bad, actually. And I don't know, they wanted to go uh, with a si similar route like uh, Milo and uh, to make a similar record. But this time around, uh, Milo had at least some good songs on it. This one has zero good songs on it. And this is why I have this one at one star and if I could I could actually give it zero stars I hate it uh, it's awful and the uh, album that I have at number eight is their newest one music of the spheres from 2021 and uh, what can I say this uh, this feels like like the previous record uh, no, not previous like uh, the previous record that I mentioned actually had full of dreams uh, it is also pretty bad and uh, they kind of try to do you know in between um, uh, Milo and um, a Head Full of Dreams they did a different kind of album like Ghost Stories and they did a similar thing with between uh, uh, Head Full of Dreams and this one with Everyday Life they even tried to do something different but I guess that wasn't as successful as the shitty pop they've been doing lately is so they decided to stay relevant again in a way and uh, I don't know this album is produced like with uh, by a bunch of people Max Martin being maybe the most you know recognizable of the bunch and you can hear it throughout this record it's supposed to be some kind of concept record I'm not sure a concept about you know stars about uh, space and whatnot but i don't feel it except there's only one track here that actually has a feel it is the closing track coloratura uh, which actually is not a bad song at all and uh, it's like 10 minutes long and and i was surprised that they actually did something different for this record 
and uh, it's the, by far the best song on the on the whole album. I mean, uh, but that song alone cannot save it. I mean, this uh, this song actually feels spacey, and that the vibe that they were going for. And the rest of the songs are just a bunch of generic uh, g AI generated pop songs with uh, annoying hooks and. Uh, uh, annoying production. It is really loud. Uh, the album kicks off with higher power, which is okay. Okay, I guess. Uh, and then we have songs like "Humankind," "My Universe," which are oh, awful. People of the Fried as well. Beautiful. It is the most annoying song by Coldplay I ever heard. Uh, there is some kind of chipmunk vocals on it, and it's annoying, and I hate it. Uh, and also. I won't comment the, uh, comment the lyrics on the record and just not just on this record, bunch of these records. I mean, Chris Martin is not, you know, a good lyricist, you may say, but uh, things he wrote uh, in the early Coldplay days was fitting for the music they were going for. But this time around, this is plain horrible. Uh, let me share a couple of lyrics from the record from I believe this is people of the pride I guess people on the left people on the right you got a lion inside people are the pride let's go Ugh, annoying I hate it there is a song uh, collaboration with uh, Selena Gomez which does nothing um, and uh, this song is actually somewhat it has a similar vibe to ghost stories record but no bueno Anyway, I'm not gonna waste my words talking about this record. It is boring, it is uninspiring, it is bland, it is bad, and I have it at one star as well. At number six, I have their 2019 release, Everyday Life. Okay, this album is tolerable. It is still not great, but at least it's not hot garbage like the albums that I mentioned previously. This album even contains some good songs by the band and one of the best songs they written since uh, Milo. And um, one of them, that song being Arabesque, I think that song is really good and uh, it has some, uh, I don't know, Viva La Vida vibe to it. And uh, I actually read that this song was actually written around that time in 2009, but they haven't had the opportunity to release it on any record. It just didn't fit and I can clearly hear why. Uh, it is really nice hearing the band playing actual instruments again after all of those blips and blobs of the previous records and um, the song is really catchy I really like the production on it as well I mean the lyrics are you know Chris Martin swearing uh, you know it kind of seems forced to me so <laughs> I, I don't know what what got into him uh, on this record I mean I know it's supposed to be a politically charged record as well but um, uh, those profanities by him just feels feel forced not natural and uh, but anyway that song is really good I really like Trouble in Town as well I like the build up on that song um, and um, that's about it basically the songs that I actually really like uh, those two and both of them are contained on the first half of the record called Sunrise and the second part of the record is called Sunset and that part of the album is not that good in my opinion Espe uh, I mean there is a first single or second single of the record was Orphans which I do not like it is similar to the things they've been doing on uh, Milo and uh, Head Full of Dreams uh, I do not like that sound uh, then we have Champion of the World similar thing uh, Guns is an interesting song but uh, is it that is it good well I don't know it's not that much anyway uh, this album feels bloated and it's really long it's almost an hour long I get it they were trying to you know do different 
things on the record, different styles, they've been using different instrumentation, which is good. I mean, they try something different, but um, it kind of falls flat for me. Uh, but still, it is much better than the records I mentioned. I still have it at 2.5 stars. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a solid effort by the band at this point. I was kind of surprised when I first heard it, so not a bad thing for them. At number five, I have an album that, in my opinion, is the beginning of their downfall, and that is Milo Zaloto from 2011. I remember when this album came out, when I heard the first single, Every Teardrop is a Waterfall, I thought, well, this song is not bad, not bad at all, but uh, as soon as I heard their second single from the record, Paradise, I was like, this sucks. Sucks big time, I hate that song, I hate every second of it, especially the chorus. And uh, I know this album was kind of a natural progression for the band. Uh, they went more upbeat and more electronic this time around. Um, and uh, we heard hints of what is to come on Viva La Vida or even X and Y from 2005. And I get it. It was a natural progression of the band. And uh, they did a solid enough job here. I mean, uh, the popular songs like Hurts Like Heaven are actually pretty good, in my opinion, and uh, much better than any of the songs they're going to do in similar fashion on uh, Head Full of Dreams and the latest record. Um, uh, Major Minus is the best song on the record, in my opinion, by far. I really like the bass line there. Uh, Charlie Brown is decent. I really don't like Princess of China with uh, Rihanna. Yeah, that song does nothing for me and there are a bunch of kind of forgettable songs some kind of acoustic songs like uh, up with the birds uh, don't let it break your heart I don't care about those um, this album is also supposed to be a concept record uh, and it actually is a concept record with some kind of story that I had to read online since the songs themselves are not you know telling that story they wanted to tell it's something about you know some kind of dystopian love story and whatnot, but they have a kind of weird way of telling it since I don't know what's going on at all. What is the story? The songs themselves are not telling, telling that story at all. And they released a comic book as well telling that story. But uh, I know this album was a big disappointment for me when it came out and I still have it low. I mean, I have it at 2.5 stars. I could give it 3 because it is much, much better than everything they, anything they released after it by far. So it maybe deserves 3 stars, but for now, I'm going to go with 2.5 stars. And finally, we're coming to the good stuff. And uh, my number 4 <clears throat> is actually a good album, and that is X and Y from 2005. This album is uh, really good. I remember when it came out, I listened to it a lot. I even bought a CD. And um, I really like all of the singles from the record. And even the overplayed Fix You. Uh, I don't know, I'm a sucker for organ and piano on that song. And that uh, ending is amazing. The lyrics are something to be desired, I mean, on that one. But... Uh, I don't know, I don't care because the music is really good. Um, this album it features more uh, electronic influences. It's actually heavily uh, influenced by electronic music and especially on songs like Talk, which uh, uh, they kind of, you know, uh, used the main hook, the main melody from Kraftwerk's song Computer Love, and I think they did a magnificent job on it. I really like that song, one of my favorite songs from the record. I really like uh, how uh, his vocal sounds on that song and I like how uh, they used that melody and played it of course with electric guitar and that breakdown towards the end is top notch. I really, really like that song. Uh, the, it opens really good with Square One, another uh, uh, heavier song on the record. I really like that riff and I uh, 
to be honest, the uh, what I like most of the the record, I really like the overall vibe, the sound of the record. I, I think it's produced really well. I like the sound of guitars on it a lot. And uh, the only uh, problem that I have with this record is uh, the length of it. I think it could be trimmed down a bit and it could be a much better cohesive record but all in all there are some nice nice songs here that i really like i like the title track i like uh, the first single uh, speed of sound which kind of reuses the melody from clocks which i don't mind at all i think it's a good song i like talk as i mentioned fix you white shadow what if all the the first couple of songs on this record are all bangers in my opinion uh, low is really good as well and I know that they did, uh, they wanted to include Johnny Cash on one of the songs and that that song was Till Kingdom Come which is a hidden track on the record but unfortunately Johnny Cash passed away before they recorded this, the song all in all a great great record in my opinion I have it at four stars and I could have it even higher uh, but uh, if it was trimmed down a bit at number three I have what is in my opinion their last great record and that is Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends from 2008. This is the first album that was produced by Brian Eno and he kind of suggested to them uh, to make uh, an uh, make an album with more variety uh, that every song sounds different from one another and they did a great great job doing so and uh, they kind of tried to do that the similar thing on everyday life but uh, as I mentioned they kind of failed but this album is almost perfect uh, the flow is amazing um, it is only 45 minutes long and it's a really fun album to listen to from start to finish um, the only song that I kind of don't care about and uh, I know many people really like it and consider it their best song and that is the title track, Viva La Vida. I really never cared about it, even when it first came out in 2008. I don't like the lyrics on it, I don't like the melody, even though it was taken from a Joe Satriani song or whatever happened there, I don't care, I don't like it that much. But everything else is great. Uh, it opens up with a beautiful lava instrument, Life in Technicolor, that segues into Cemeteries of London, which kind of has a slight eerie vibe, especially the way how Martin sings on it. Then we go to Lost, which is a bit pop-oriented tune, and we can hear the hints of what is to come uh, on this song, and they did a great job on it. Uh, then we come to maybe the most underrated song by the band and on this album, and that is 42. I really like the way it starts with only piano, uh, with Chris singing over it, and then unexpected twist uh, at um, the middle of the song where it switches to a more upbeat, up-tempo jam. Really good song. Um, then we have the infectious piano melody on of Lovers in Japan, with the second part being a hidden track, Reign of Love, a more subdued, gentle piano melody on it. And I really like what they did with those hidden tracks. There are a couple of them uh, on the record. Uh, then we have the song uh, Yes, which also contains a hidden, uh, hidden track, which kind of sounds like a shoegazy track, almost like My Bloody Valentine kind of thing, uh, which I really like. Um, then again, we have the last three songs on the record, which in my opinion are the best, and that is Violet Hill, Strawberry Swing, and the title track, uh, actually, uh, Death and All His Friends. Um, those three songs are great. I really like Violet Hill. Uh, I like the production on it. I like the way how it sounds. It's a more politically charged song, and uh, I really like that chorus i really like the lyrics on the the, the song as well um, uh, it kind of reminds me of a peter gabriel song for some reason in a good way um, i don't know i think that song is a great choice for a first for the first single uh, then we have uh, uh, the closing track which has infectious sing-along part uh, in the end I really like it and I really like how it closes the album and it, and it segues into the hidden track another hidden track The Escapist which is also a fantastic way to close this record 
and um, I could see this album being uh, my number one Coldplay record. It's really, really fun record, and I get it that uh, uh, many people tend to have this one as their favorite Coldplay record, and I totally understand it. Uh, it is a really good record, and it deserved all the praise it got when it was released, in my opinion. So I have it at 4.5 stars. Uh, only because I don't really like the title track, but everything else I think is stellar. And now it kind of gets tough for me because I love both of these records, I think they're amazing, but I have to give a slight edge to Parachutes, uh, which, I don't know, it, it always grabs me, I don't know if it's the production or the way it sounds, but it has its own magic, its uniqueness, and I love it, and I always had it at number one, so I still have it. So my number two is A Rush of Blood to the Head from 2002, their second studio album. Also, like I said, I have it at five stars. I think it's an amazing record from start to finish. I like every song here. And uh, as soon as you hear uh, politics, you kind of know what to expect from the rest of the record. You can hear already that this album is not Parachutes 2. It is a different album, it is much bigger in scope, it is louder, I mean the production is louder, uh, they're using more instruments here, more electric guitar, the songs are more piano driven, I really, uh, there is kind of sense of urgency throughout these songs, it is more intense, especially when you hear politics and that part when he sings open up your eyes, when the drums and piano and everything, it is a different, totally different album than Parachutes in my opinion. and. Um, as soon as the politics is, uh, politics is finished, we have In My Place, which was the first single from the record and the first song they wrote for the record. Uh, they even played it live during Parachute's tour. And uh, they had some problems finishing that song, uh, but um, it is an excellent uh, lead-off single from the album. I really like how well that song is produced. I really like the guitars. I really like the drums, the bass, uh, the strings on it, everything. And the great part, the great thing about these early Coldplay records, and especially A Rush of Blood to the Head, is how well the band sounds. I mean, every band member brought something to the table. They wrote really good melodies, uh, really good uh, parts, and it shows throughout the record. And the sad thing is, we don't hear that anymore on any new Coldplay record. I mean, everything is buried beneath the lazy production, popular production, and uh, you can only basically hear since and Chris Martin. There's n I don't hear bass anymore, nothing, basically. So it's a sad thing that uh, the guys are kind of, uh, you know, overshadowed by lousy synths. And... Um, this album is all about the band. All, every band member did a great, great, great job here. And I especially really like uh, the bass uh, on this album on songs like uh, God Put a Smile Upon Your Face, which is my favorite song from the album. I really like the build up on it. And then we have two biggest songs from the record, Scientist and Clocks, and Clocks being their biggest song. Um, and funny thing about that one is it wasn't even supposed to be on Rush of Blood to the Head. It was the latest addition to the album. It was, um, you know, they considered, you know, not including the uh, that song. They wanted to include it on the next album. But the management, I told them, you know, why don't you include this song? I think it's great. And they did. And yeah, it was their biggest song, the song that... Uh, propel them into stardom basically uh, I really like it it is it was my favorite for a very long time and I, I still like to hear it it is never gets old for me even though I heard it I don't know how many times it was all over the place uh, when it was released and even today so yeah then we have two acoustic songs here as well like um, Green Eyes which is a lovely acoustic ballad and a warning sign which has a more country uh, vibe to it, country rock vibe to it. I really liked it. Well, I like that song. And um, uh, one of my favorite songs from the record is also Rush of Blood to the Head, the title track. I really like the lyrics on it. I really like how um, dark it sounds. It has some kind of darkness to it. It is not as bright as the rest of the album. And uh, uh, the album finishes off strongly with Amsterdam, uh, which is a lovely tune with great build up. And um, 
excellent way to com to finish this album so I don't know there's what to say more about it I think it's a fantastic record and uh, it's a shame that uh, Coldplay is not doing this anymore so yes I have Rush of Blood to the Head as my number two at five stars and number one Parachutes of course from 2000 their debut record I don't know like I said there's something about this record that always grabs me it is really unique I really like the atmosphere on the album I really like the guitar tone on the record it is really simple and subdued unlike uh, Rush of Blood to the Head for example it is much more grounded uh, the songs are simpler in nature uh, mostly acoustic guitar and piano and electric guitar here and there but mostly acoustic guitar piano um, it starts off like uh, if politics showed what to expect on Russia blood to the head then don't panic sets the mood for parachutes it just starts immediately there is no big intro no interlude it just starts and I really love that song it's my favorite Coldplay song I really like the guitar sound on it I really like how Chris sings on the, on on it and I really like the lyrics as well and uh, uh, I know that Coldplay gets compared to Radiohead a lot especially the early Coldplay stuff but to be honest I don't hear it it's maybe on high speed which kind of reminds me uh, of uh, airbag uh, from OK Computer but just tiny bit uh, I mean there are a couple of songs on the rush of blood to the head that kind of reminds me more of uh, Radiohead I don't hear it to be honest what I hear here is mostly I Jeff Buckley uh, especially on song shiver which is kind of an homage to Jeff Buckley and his album grace and the way Chris sings on that song reminds me a lot of Jeff Buckley a great song by the way I really like uh, uh, great guitar melodies great riff uh, the whole band is playing amazingly here I, I it is a shame like I said that they stopped doing this because they're all uh, great players mm. we have to mention of course yellow which is uh, their biggest song from this album uh, I really like the instrumentation on, on it but the lyrics not as much the lyrics are kind of funny in a way but that's the thing with the early Coldplay stuff it, the lyrics um, just kind of work uh, because the music was really good and you know uh, I don't mind it I I just don't listen to it that often because I heard it you know how many times it was all over, over the radio uh, but that's a highlight definitely from the record uh, then we have Spy some more moodier and haunting song uh, High Speed is also a really great song and I believe this song was uh, written long before uh, Parachutes came uh, I, I, there was an EP, uh, I, rem I don't really recall the name, I think it's Blue Room or something uh, that was on, still an atmospheric moody song, I really love it, then um, um, then what we have, we have Sparks, which is a great song as well, uh, but all in all, what I like about this album, uh, like I told you, it is the atmosphere, the way it sounds, and uh, its simplicity it is a really simple record uh, with some great songs on it great playing and when I want to calm myself I really like just put this album on and listen to it 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 has that uh, it has that vibe that I really love and uh, it's one of the be better debuts I've heard to be honest from any band and yes this will be my uh, Coldplay rankings uh, if you have your own rankings please put them in the comments down below tell me what you think um, and uh, what can I say thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one